Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. Torrential rain caused major problems all over San Diego County on this gloomy first week of April. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt. Roads turned into fast moving rivers. This golf course in Benita became a lake and several cars were dangling on the edge after an embankment collapsed on El Cajon Boulevard and a mudslide caused several elderly patients out of a nursing home in North County. 10 News anchor Lindsay Pena begins our team coverage on this hard hitting storm. The nearly non-stop rain Friday forced the evacuation of a whole section of the Encinitas Nursing and Rehabilitation Center. Emergency crews were called out to the facility on Santa Fe Drive just before 5 o'clock. Water started to uh, come inside the building, but it also threatened one of the walls. So there was some concern that there, some of those patient rooms were going to be impacted. Encinitas Deputy Fire Chief Robert Ford says his department was busy all day with flooding-related calls. Staff at the nursing home moved 23 patients to a safer location and ended up transporting 10 of them to another facility. Luckily, no one was injured. We got a lot of water and debris and other stuff, and it's essentially what it was. It was our ground is saturated. We've had a lot of rain. Experts came out to check the building and found no major damage, just some water and mud. Structurally, it was intact, so the, the building itself didn't... Um, have any structural damage. There was a fence and some mud upstream. Other than some water and mud inside, most of the cleanup's already done. Lindsay Pena, 10 News. Meteorologist Angelica Campos is tracking the storm. She is joining us now with a look at the places hit the hardest. Angelica? Kim, it was just what a sight to see. Yesterday at this time, we were looking at widespread rain and it didn't stop until this afternoon. It's already looking a little bit better, but of course we had problems in Encinitas. It was coming down heavily this afternoon and over the last 24 hours, they picked up 4.6 inches of rain. Now, as we look at the satellite and radar, you can see it's definitely looking better around the county and we expected it. No more flood watches or warnings. We do have one for the San Diego River, and that is expected. Typically, after heavy rain, it takes a little bit longer for the water to recede. But as we fly around the county, you can see conditions are looking much drier. What you see there is just um, the uh, basically the bounce back from the radar because it is in high resolution. But it is much drier all around the county, just a few leftover showers, and it will get better overnight. Coming up, I'll have the totals, how much we saw throughout the week and over the last 24 hours. And heavy flooding led to several water rescues with people and animals trapped inside their cars today. The storm dumped water from the coast to the East County. In Mission Valley, police evacuated the River Leaf Inn. One man rushed out to his car in the flooded parking lot to save his dog. I didn't realize the water had gone up so fast, so it did, but he's okay. Nearby, a woman was trapped on a sliver of dry land with her two dogs. Firefighters used a helicopter to hoist them out. In San Marcos, firefighters formed a human chain to rescue a driver trapped on a flooded street. You can also stay ahead of the rain with a live radar and weather videos from your neighborhood on the 10 News mobile app. Turning to the latest on COVID-19, county leaders reported 65 more local cases of coronavirus today. That brings our total to 1,693. The county also reported four more deaths, bringing our local total to 44. And new tonight, two more crew members on the San Diego-based USNS Mercy tested positive for the virus. That now brings the total to three. And those sailors are in isolation off the ship. The Mercy is being used to take care of non-COVID-19 patients who need to be in a hospital. And tonight, we know the four San Diego lifeguards who contracted the virus have recovered. Mayor Faulkner making that announcement as he and local faith leaders urge San Diegans to celebrate Easter and Passover at home. Those traditions, of course, will be different this year. And they must be different to help keep everyone safe. Every synagogue in San Diego that I have heard of, um, and my own as well, is offering opportunities for people to participate in religious services online, through media streaming, and through Zoom. What we're learning now is we can't trust in our money. 
We can't trust in our jobs. We can't trust in the economy, in the world. Everything is on, on shaky ground except the faithfulness of God. And the Sheriff's Department will be enforcing the public health orders throughout Easter weekend. The mayor also reminded San Diegans to stay vigilant as we begin to flatten our curve, but we have many tough days ahead. And there are some positive new indicators tonight that the efforts of so many people across the country to stay home and slow the spread may be having an impact. As ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports, some states are now seeing their own surge in cases. Signs of hope in the battle against COVID-19. Doctors on the National Coronavirus Task Force saying for the first time since the pandemic began, the number of cases in the U.S. may be leveling off. But as encouraging as they are, we have not reached the peak. And so every day we need to continue to do what we did yesterday and the week before and the week before that. In New York, the rate of hospitalizations down and more people are now leaving intensive care than going in. Experts say that shows that social distancing is working. This is not the time to feel that since we have made such important advance in the sense of success of the mitigation, that we need to be pulling back. But concern is rising in some parts of the country, including Michigan. Our most vulnerable citizens um, are dying in a helpless uh, manner. And Maryland, where the governor warns they're now seeing an increase in new cases. This is going to be one of our most dangerous times ever this weekend and over the next week or so. With millions across the country out of work, many waiting in long lines for food. They have enough food here for 20,000 individuals. President Trump announcing he's creating a task force to decide how to get Americans back to work. Some raising concerns, though, about the country reopening too soon. This is by far the biggest decision of my life because I have to say, OK, let's go. This is what we're going to do. Dr. Anthony Fauci saying widespread antibody testing will be key. Within a period of a week or so, we're going to have a rather large number of tests that are available. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. President Trump is now eyeing May as the new timeline for reopening parts of the U.S. economy. That new date is leaving many workers and small businesses wondering how they'll get by. 17 million Americans have now filed for unemployment. The Trump administration says some of them are getting relief in the form of a $600 additional unemployment check. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said today he is working with Congress to secure more funding for small businesses. Well, I want to encourage all small business that if they don't get a loan today, there'll be money. Forecasters are warning that unemployment could hit 20 percent in the coming weeks. Some grocery stores are taking matters into their own hands to protect their employees. Right now, Vons, Albertsons and Gelson's are requiring customers to wear a facial covering before coming into the store. The California Grocers Association says more are likely to follow. Adam Zach, who owns Jensen's Foods, that's in Point Loma, spent his morning creating signs to inform shoppers of the store's new rule. My responsibility is to my employees, and so if it's one more thing that we can do to protect them, um, that's my number one concern. The county does not require the general public to wear facial coverings, though it does strongly recommend it. A major drug bust in the South Bay. Border Patrol agents discovered a long tunnel which ran from Tijuana to a warehouse in Otay Mesa. The Border Patrol tweeted out this video of the tunnel. Part of it had rails for a push cart. Other parts of the tunnel were small enough that agents had to crawl. Prosecutors say they seized $30 million worth of heroin, fentanyl, cocaine, meth and marijuana. A South Bay man named Rogelio Guzman was arrested. He's accused of being part of the smuggling crew. We have a 10 News follow up to a story we brought you on Monday. The fire that destroyed the China Max restaurant in Kearney Mesa Monday night has been ruled an accident. There was some concern the fire was a hate crime against the Asian community. Investigators say the cause was an electrical issue from the overhang in front of the building. 
They say surveillance video shows the overhangs start to smoke after the restaurant closed. The building was a total loss. No one was hurt.